For hundreds of millions of years, Mother Nature's design of our fascinating and beautiful Earth remained relatively unchanged. Then came man, more than a million years ago. But still, our planet's evolution was almost imperceptible. She gave us barren deserts and rich forests, lakes, seas, and pounding rivers, flat plains, and tropical wonderlands, ice zones, and mountain ranges. She also gave us a small but profuse group of islands in the southern hemisphere and created a unique ambiance of beauty, fertility and safety for man from predators other than himself. The Antipodean lands remained in exquisite isolation, undiscovered until the 11th century when Polynesian canoe explorers landed and settled. For almost 800 years, Nothing was known about this paradise on Earth until the Europeans arrived and found a land so natural, so unspoiled, and its natives living blissfully in peace and tranquility. The land, New Zealand. The film, it's about a growing band of modern natives who have found a perfect way of life, a life without clothes, who blend with one of nature's miracles. Our incredible journey took us over 2,000 miles covering both the North and South Islands and still we missed so much. From Auckland to Manakai to Taranga, down the magnificent thermal region of Rotorua, south to Taupo and then east to Mokai and the black volcanic sands, from New Plymouth to Wanganui, Palmerston North to Porirua and Wellington by ferry over the Cook Strait to Picton on the South Island. From the only public clothing optional resort in Mapua to nude golf at Nelson. Then the scenic route through the beautiful Lewis Pass and Murchison to our final destination, Christchurch. It took us six weeks to wend our way south, but the thousand kilometer return drive to Auckland had to be completed in 24 hours. Our journey from England took 38 hours, stopping at Los Angeles and Hawaii for connections. So it was with great relief that our first location was here, the picturesque Auckland Outdoor Health Club. Auckland Outdoor Health Club is one of the oldest clubs in New Zealand. Established on the 24th of August 1949, it has remained at the forefront of the Kiwi nudist movement, actively seeking publicity to spread the word. Take a quick look around and it's obvious that a great deal of care and finance has gone into improving and expanding the club and its facilities. It's easy to forget the struggle and hard work that so many pioneers invested to create the resorts that we have the privilege to film. The degree of tolerance today is very different from the hostility those early creators experienced. And New Zealand society has a remarkably tolerant attitude towards nudity, as we discovered during our fascinating journey. First, let's introduce you to Doug and Peggy. They're both well-known and respected Kiwi nudists of many years standing. And, as Doug is fortunate to have early retirement, they generously offered their full-time services as guides, which has greatly enhanced the quality and quantity of our coverage of New Zealand nudism. Remarkably, we share the same last name of Ball, which caused a little confusion. I've since looked into my family tree, but no connection. No doubt, way back, my ancestors had the same wanderlust as I have, and, like thousands of other English and Europeans, set out on these exciting 18th century voyages of discovery. 
Auckland Outdoor Health Club has most of the features you'd expect from a long-established resort, including this shop, which opens at weekends for much-needed refreshments. I was warned about the Kiwi Sun when we arrived. Some claim that the ozone hole is immediately above Auckland. So, despite my travels and unfaded tan, and despite spending most of the day under a parasol, I burned. The grounds here are extensive, including this lovely bushwalk. see a lot of this here in New Zealand, trampolino. It's lovely to see kids having a go. Perhaps with practice they can get to be as good as this guy. It's not just the guys, though, who can demonstrate their skill on the trampoline. gymnastics seem to be popular here. Perhaps that's why such a sparsely populated country maintains such a strong presence in world sporting events. New Zealand is most certainly a health conscious country and with the wide open spaces here, who can blame them for taking advantage of the outdoor life? A club with no pool is almost as bad as a pub with no beer. And in the temperatures we've been experiencing here, thank God for it. Now here's a game that you, Aussies, Brits and Kiwis will be fully familiar with. Mini Ten. Rare in the rest of Europe, and as far as I've seen, non-existent in the United States. And that's strange because it really is an exhilarating game. Fast, skillful 
and utilizing only half the land of a full-size tennis court. The rules are the same as tennis, but the speed of the game is much faster. I'm amazed that it hasn't caught on in America because I know how popular tennis is there. We'll see more Minuten later and learn a little bit about the history and the strange bat known as a thug. The progress of this great club is obvious, with the lush bush and flora and with this magnificent clubhouse too. The sun's ferocity diminishes as it sets, and the cool of the evening takes over, soothing many an overheated body. It's time for what the Kiwis and Aussies call the Barbie. and the great people is always a wretch, but our schedule is tight. Although Wellington is the capital city of New Zealand, Auckland has become the biggest in commercial and population terms. Perhaps somewhat overshadowed by the larger outdoor club, Auckland Sun Club nevertheless is thriving. Smaller grounds, fewer members, but friendly, perhaps more personal. Our visit was brief and midweek. We didn't expect to see too many people. In miniature, though, Auckland Sun Club has most of the essential facilities. Their pool is smaller than some, but carefully maintained. Grassy sunbathing areas and plants and bush, which are regularly and lovingly maintained. An excellent clubhouse with lots of space for functions and Mini ten. The Englishness of New Zealand life is probably unique, and it was easy to feel at home here. Of course, the regular offerings of tea was music to my ears. And of course, Miniten, the almost obligatory game in any Kiwi club, serving a band of extremely enthusiastic and, I might add, skillful players. Quite what the future of such a small club is, I'm not sure. But then, perhaps, they prefer not to consider expansion, keeping it small and personal. That being so, there is certainly a lot of room for many more of these retreats from city life. Now to explore beyond the cities, and our first visit to one of New Zealand's magnificent beaches. This is St Leonard's Beach, only a short drive from Auckland. Nudity, on a closed optional basis, has been accepted here for some time and its proximity to Auckland makes it extremely popular. I was most impressed by the way that, nude or not, everyone integrated well, and frankly, the fact that many people were naked was not an issue. This is a refreshing change in my experience around the world. We were to find many other examples of Kiwi tolerance and open-mindedness. I came to Auckland from Sydney 17 years ago. I joined to, or applied to join to three, four of the Sun Clubs got knocked back in all of them. So when I saw an advertisement in the paper for three beaches, I thought that was my thing, and it is. How many free beaches are there in this area, Tony? In the Auckland area, there are probably at the moment some ten beaches which are regularly used by nude bathers. Within the Auckland area, at least, there is very little antagonism between nudists and non-nudists. There has been the occasional brush, but uh, in the sense that the nudists usually predominate and the non-nudists have usually, if they have objected, packed up bags and gone home. There have been the occasional brush with the law. Um, there was one recently, just last Sunday, around the point from here, no problem. But on this beach at the same time, there was a, a sergeant in full uniform doing his regular beach patrol. He wasn't concerned. I'll admit some of the nudists were a little concerned he might be worrying them, but he wasn't worrying them. He's looking for real troublemakers. Nudists aren't troublemakers. Um, so, in, by and by, we get by, and it's a very um, 
happy arrangement. I would say, yes, nudity on New Zealand beaches, in fact, nudity anywhere in New Zealand is totally and absolutely legal. has the most fascinating range of landscapes. These green hills are very reminiscent of England, but will soon be travelling through mountainous regions, semi-deserts and active thermal areas. We're now at the Bay of Plenty Sun Club for a brief look on our way through to the Maori tourist area of Rotorua. Again, midweek is not a good time for people, but the beautiful layout here warrants inclusion. Small clubhouse and pool, but plenty of grassy areas for sunbathing and twisting paths for peaceful meanders amongst the trees and across fields. Down the road from the Bay of Plenty Club is Papamoa Beach near Matata. We're here because, as will happen many times on this trip, the New Zealand media are most interested in our filmmaking assignment to promote Kiwi naturism. Our first encounter with the press is with the Bay of Plenty Times. A reporter and photographer met us on the beach and interviewed us and took lots of pictures. <laughs> And this is the result, front page news, and their editorial was surprisingly sympathetic. No jokes, none of the usual sarcasm, just good, honest and supportive journalism. The nudist could do with more of this worldwide. The knowledge that no law exists nationally in New Zealand to prohibit nudity gave me a very comfortable and secure feeling. To pull in off the road, strip off, and picnic naked beside this lovely lake in Rotorua is a mental freedom I've rarely experienced. It's strange and sad that more Kiwi nudists don't appreciate the unbelievable freedom they have 
and the rare degree of tolerance that exists amongst the population. What a splendid country in which to exploit this freedom. Larger than California and more than twice the area of Britain, yet with a population of just over three million people. The opportunities to go nude are incredible, but underexploited. It should now be common to see naked people amongst the clothed population, fully integrated and exercising both their own personal and legal rights. Instead, predominantly, with the exception of one clothing optional resort, which we visited, and the Free Beach Group, nudists still tend to gather behind fortress-type enclosures, and many relish their anonymity. With freedom breaking out around the world and walls coming down, maybe it's time for naturists and resorts to demolish their own mental and physical walls and barriers. Rotorua, pretty much to the centre of the North Island, is a favourite tourist spot. Actively thermal, you see these steam billows everywhere. Most of them are fenced off as the temperature of the water would be instantly fatal if you were to slip and fall in. New Zealand may only have three million people, but it also has 60 million sheep, lamb being one of its chief exports. This sheep shearing demonstration took only a remarkable one minute, 47 seconds to complete. We, however, can show it to you in only a third of that time. Rotorua, often referred to as Sulphur City, is also the centre for Maori residents. They came to this area in the late 1300s after landing in the Bay of Plenty, probably in a canoe similar to this one. They called it the Arawa Canoe and named their tribe after it. Canoe building remains popular today amongst the Maori people, although more modern materials such as fibreglass are used. But wood carving is still very much alive, providing work for hundreds of people to service the tourist trade. The carvers demonstrate their skills here too, in the most famous Arawa meeting house, Tamatakapua. Romantic legends abound amongst the troubled history of the Maori people. However, they remain most loyal to the queen and this statue of Victoria surrounded by Maori art is a charming example. Right opposite is the Church of St Faith's, offering evidence that all cultures in New Zealand live, for the most part, happily alongside each other. This is the tolerance we've mentioned, which should, in my opinion, have naturists rushing into the open to stand alongside other minorities and become an everyday part of Kiwi life. Our next stop is the local club in Rotorua called Rotata. We'll explain the name later and bring you some remarkable scenes of naked people treading a popular tourist spot. But before we leave the town, I'm sure you'll enjoy this beautiful demonstration of Maori music. <laughs> Yeah. 
Rotatar Sun Club is actually in a small location called Reparoa, and here we came across Leo van Ophoven. We've got heat in the ground here. We've got beautiful. Uh, we've got a beautiful hot stream. We've got a waterfall. You can stand underneath it. It drops beautiful hot water onto your body from about 18 feet high. Then we've got another special uh, little waterfall, and it is a natural bath, you may as well say. Then um, we've got a tremendous amount of uh, pine forests and uh, native trees as well. And all this makes it really unique, uh, I would say very unique in, in the world. Um, well, there is heat in the ground all over the place. And when I move to this special area, it is absolutely, uh, uh, it is uh, 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 situated in s such a place that I was almost sure if I started uh, drilling a hole, I would find geothermal heat somehow. So all of a sudden I decided I'll bring a post hole digger along and with some extension pipes and I started digging at a certain place where I thought that I would find heat. So uh, to be honest, I did find heat in the end of it. And you just turn the tap on and, now and all I have to do now at this very moment sort of to turn the tap on and I have got a nice hot shower. Now for a look around this remarkable area. First, a short boat hop across the lake. This is Lake Ohakuri, and Rotatar's grounds run right down to this jetty. What a fantastic asset this is to a nudist club. And needless to say, the members make full use of it, even though it's extremely popular amongst non-nudists. You'll begin to see the magic of this region as we climb and explore this thermal wonderland. Waterfalls, pools, riverlets, all at delightfully warm temperatures as hot geyser water merges with natural cold springs. This is just a taste of what's to come because by getting up early and by arrangement with the extremely friendly owner of the Thermal Wonderland, we were able to beat the thousands of tourists who come to visit Ariki Kuraka. This is the first time that a large group of nude people have visited this remarkable natural geyser. The event captured the imagination of New Zealand's network television and they sent us a terrific couple on sound and camera to follow our expeditions.
piece in front of us is an old earthquake fault where there's been an earthquake and it's slipped down and then the silica has recovered it to make it just look like a step. The colouring you can see in it is uh, sometimes it's chemicals from, the, uh, from all the water, sometimes it's a hot water algae. What we're standing on is all part of the silica. Uh, this is fairly solid, but some of it can be very thin, and hence the danger notices around the place. So we don't want to fall through it. It's extremely hot underneath. What a wonderful feeling to stroll naked in this spectacular wonderland. Everyone seemed to get a very special sensation out of this experience. There was still the TV broadcast to look forward to that night at 6.30. It was a Sunday and we were all wondering what level of censorship would be imposed at such a peak viewing time. Well, that forecast doesn't look too promising, but it has been pretty good so far this summer, and thousands of sun seekers could be flocking to New Zealand thanks to a new tourist promotion. As Wendy Dicker reports, they'll be travelling light. Just another group of tourists arriving at another scenic wonderland. But these tourists are to star in a film featuring the least of props. New Zealand nudists are spearheading a new tourist initiative, touting the attractions of the holiday that offers less rather than more. Cameraman David Ball works with only the bare essentials. He's an English filmmaker with a string of nudist films behind him. His New Zealand assignment combines the high spots and the bare spots into a travelogue. I mean, a naked body's a naked body. Uh, but to see naked people, families, whole families, enjoying nature, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a mixture of travelogue and the nudist philosophy. Picking their way through a thermal valley, the only concession to convention, shoes. It's all good, clean family fun, according to the nudists. For the truly adventurous, there'll be a nude walk up Mount Cook, at least as far as exposure permits. Wendy Dicker, One Network Nudes. We were amazed to see full frontal shots broadcast at such a peak time, and apart from spelling my name incorrectly, we were all delighted. This is further proof of the relaxed atmosphere in New Zealand, a country I had always believed to be, perhaps, 20 or 30 years behind Britain. Could you imagine this same broadcast going out in America or England on national TV? Our final experience at Rotatar, and a real pleasure, is to relax in yet another natural hot pool. There are dozens like this around here, some with larger waterfalls and tight little canyons worn away over millions of years. And with care, they can be explored. They all eventually lead out to the main lake. It's exciting, but for now, a warm soak is all we want. Our schedule is relentless, an early night and an early start. We're heading now south towards the Tasman coastline and New Plymouth. But round every corner, there's something to stop and look at. Like this geothermal power plant at Warakai, harnessing nature's faults and providing over 192,000 kilowatts of power for thousands of people. Like the mighty Hucker Falls, where the Waikato River plunges through a narrow cleft in the rock. means foaming in Maori and this is a perfect description for this beautiful phenomenon. And Haka Village, an historic reproduction of a pioneer village where you can learn much about the origins of New Zealand and its multicultural people. You can even dress up and be photographed in colonial costume and receive your instant sepia print. New Zealand has no native land animals 
pigs, goats, deer, and sheep are descendants of their imported ancestors. Many of the birds accepted as New Zealand residents, such as the sparrow, thrush, skylark, and blackbird are imported. But this little chap, responsible for the New Zealand nickname, is most definitely native. Unable to fly, nocturnal, shy. The Kiwi is a national symbol of New Zealand and, oddly, exclusive to these islands. About a foot long, with their distinctive long bill, it's reckoned these birds have inhabited this land for 70 million years. A member of Doug and Peggy's family own this summer house on the western coast of Mokai, just north of New Plymouth. They call it a batch, spelled B-A-C-H. I never did quite understand where the name came from, but I was instantly envious of this hideaway, especially as going nude was easy. Just a few steps to an open field, down a long slope, through a gate, over a small dune, to the sea. Still totally naked and feeling extremely comfortable in the dry heat of the Kiwi summer sun. The first shock for me was to see this vast expanse of black sand. I've never seen it before, although I'd heard about it, and it was difficult at first to avoid the impression that it was dirty. But, of course, that's not the case. It's a result of volcanic action millions of years ago, and really, it's just like ordinary sand. What a joy it is to swim and stroll and sunbathe on a vast public beach like this, with no fear of recrimination. Although we met no one else, it wouldn't have mattered if we had. Such is the feeling you have in tolerant New Zealand, providing you have your own inner confidence and conviction that nude is natural. Doug is a health nut. I'm sure he won't mind the description, and his lean, muscular body is testament to his healthy lifestyle, of which naturism is only a part. So, as a frequent marathon runner with an impressive record in his age group, I wanted to test the theory that an overweight, out-of-condition ex-sprinter, and that's a piece of ancient history, could outrun a long distancer over a short period. I was right, but only just. Above New Plymouth, at a place called Taranaiki, in the midst of a farming community, is the Taranaiki Naturist Club. As you can see, it nestles in the hills below the magnificent Mount Egmont and has superb panoramic views across the New Plymouth countryside. is a club with mixed success. Certainly they have the grounds and facilities to provide an essential retreat for the large New Plymouth population, but membership is quite small. Perhaps this is understandable with a tolerant nation surrounded by such a large coastline, but naturist clubs still have a special role to play. The social life, sports, pool and so on are things you don't find on the local beach. The Taranaki members and management have a wonderful opportunity to promote themselves down in New Plymouth. Open days, special events, concerts for the youngsters, talks and seminars, using all of the latest techniques, including video. The potential for expansion is enormous. The time we spent here in the high heat of the summer was wonderful. Under the constant gaze of Mount Egmont, watching protectively 
over its countryside heritage, nature's children playing and relaxing naturally. Nature is wonderful, but sometimes it can be very cruel. Down the coast road from New Plymouth to Palmerston North is Wanganui. There used to be a delightful nudist resort here, but now? The two days previous to the flash flood that came down, we had campers down here with children and so forth, and the flood came through a week before Waitangi weekend, early in the morning, and we estimate it must have been a wall of water about 25 to 40 feet high, which came straight up over the road, through the club grounds, went halfway up the clubhouse to the level of the windows. It took out our mini tin court, which is normally behind us, and where we play volleyball, we are now in one foot of mud. Um, the, the risk was that if we had been here when it happened, we would have lost lives, children's lives and vehicles. It's just phenomenal what happened, and it's taken us a long time to, to come to grips with that fact, I think. The club is not down and out. We thought about going and joining Palmerston. We used their grounds, and we're very grateful for that. But we had a, a get-together with the local farmer, and we decided that we like the place where we are, the people that come here like our grounds. So we've decided to stay. We will move our camping grounds up to high level above us up here, and we will um, improve down here and bring it back to what it was, even better than what it was before with the help of our members. The courageous people of Wanganui Sun Club deserve to succeed, and we wish them well. Who knows, if you plan to travel to New Zealand soon, you may already see a transformed club. Palmerston North Sun Club is, on the other hand, one of the most successful family clubs in New Zealand, and the last on our tour of the North Island. It's a good-sized club with lots of space to wander, some of the cleanest and most modern shower facilities we've ever seen. A great pool. And of course, Mini Ten. Two excellent courts. Surprisingly, they also have a golf course. Well, at least a pitch and putt. The ground's a bit bumpy so luck plays as big a part as skill. But it's fun, and there's usually a good crowd playing. David is quite a character, a native Canadian, but now an enthusiastic Kiwi. He's quite an organiser too, having planned many events. He's a perfect example of how this nude style of living brings out the child in all of us.
then sheer chaos broke out. local resident and member is Kevin Sampson, who is also the public relations officer for the New Zealand Nudist Federation. Things are relaxed about nudity in New Zealand, David, as you've seen around the country. Uh, it's come about over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, people are quite free now to go nude on the beaches as long as they tend to go away from other groups, um, not too far away. But I think it's part of the New Zealand ethos. We've got plenty of space, there's room for everybody and there's room for people to do their own thing. The sorts of activities we get into to promote naturalism in New Zealand are the preparation of public material for clubs to distribute to prospective members. Uh, we try to get the press interested in coming out to seeing what's happening at the clubs. Uh, we get, usually get them to the annual rally of the Federation and we get the TV people out to the annual rally so they can see really what's going on. The Federation the it is involved politically to achieve objectives like, say, the freedoms which are seen in Denmark. Uh, we're working through the Local Government Association to have the model bylaw changed so that local governments can then say, OK, in our area we will allow people to go nude on any beach they like. I don't think it will decline. Um, I think there's starting to be a momentum again. There was a momentum 10, 15 years ago which the clubs really pushed forward. I think it's starting to happen again through some of the people you were meeting. I think the clubs will continue to grow. Um, there will be, I think, a bigger growth, however, in nudism out in the general population, whether it's on the beaches or just generally. Um, nudity will become more accepted and more people will go nude. Um, I think there is too much secretiveness about the nudist club movement in New Zealand. Uh, we're trying to break through that and encourage people to be proud of what is a great way of life. I think there are a growing number of people who are prepared to stand up and say, we're nudists, we're proud of it. Again, the local press found our visit fascinating. That's almost it for the North Island. We had planned to film at the magnificent Wellington Club, but about our only day's rain throughout the six-week trip was torrential and on our shoot day. So. Apologies to all of those who turned up and organised so many things to film. We'll catch you next time. A local newspaper near Wellington in Porirua heard about our unusual assignment and wanted an interview and photos. So, what do we do? We go to a very popular public beach and simply strip off for the session. Although the beach was almost deserted, you'd still think twice about stripping off on a public beach in most other countries. But it's the absence of any law directly forbidding nudity that gives you the confidence to exercise this natural right here. Across the whole of New Zealand, you'll find examples like this of the Maori culture. This is a marae. In fact, if I can pronounce it, the Takapua Hia marae. Uh, kia ora, my name is Harata Solomon. I'm a kuya or an elder of, of the tribe Ngati Toa, Ngati Toa Rangatira. And what happened was when you arrived, um, when people arrive at our gate, the, it's customary and traditional to give them a karanga or a call of welcome, which is the first sound you hear on a marae, which is the voice of the women. And uh, in that karanga they are saying welcome, proceed on to the marae, 
And what is the purpose of the haka in this ceremony, Mrs. Solomon? The haka was, today took place, place of a, a hinaki or a waiata, and because we had a, a number of our young men, before you actually came on, I said, oh, you guys are doing a haka today, so they didn't mind at all, and I love to see them do it anyway. <laughs> That's just showing their manliness and uh, their uh, the heritage that they have, how proud they are of it. It's all part of everyday life, really. Visitors are very important on a marae. We want them to feel special, and, um, and that's the way we treat them. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's quite a few Māori proverbs which say that uh, if you don't treat your visitors well, your marae is nothing but dust in the courtyard. And so that sort of places where it, the importance of it. This is the ship that will soon take us across the Cook Strait to the South Island. We shot it from Breaker Bay, a beach fairly close to the harbour, and guess what? Right. Another free beach braved by these Kiwi nudists on a somewhat blustery day. Most people only venture to the beach when it's hot, but nudists have a great passion for the outdoor life, and the feel of even a cool breeze on the whole of your body when you're swimming or exercising is always exhilarating. this beach. We're looking forward to the South Island. We've heard a lot about its beauty and its great new displays. We head west along the northern coastline of the South Island as we get our first look at the wonderful scenery. Our first destination is a unique resort in New Zealand called Mapua Leisure Park. Unique because it's clothing optional and as a campground is open to the public. No membership required. Cathy Trot is the founder and she told us all about this resort. Well, the, the, the park itself is um, situated um, about 30 k's from Nelson uh, on, a, on a peninsula, so we're, we're a very private little um, camp. And um, the dress optional aspect of it, I think, is, was sort of put together originally by the group that, that fought, were formed to buy the, the park. Um, we were all nudists, but we sort of felt going commercial we needed to have the dress optional side of it. The grounds are 25 acres um, in mature pines um, with it right, right beside the sea. And we, we have put in um, tennis courts, mini tent courts, sauna and spa and swimming pool. Um, we now have 18 units, accommodation units, and all the facilities one would find in, a, in the motor camp kitchen, this toilet and shower blocks. We find that 
before Christmas we have more nudists. Over the Christmas period where you've got sort of your general public here, which is sort of our the busiest time for us, it's probably um, more like 60% clothed and 40% nudists. And then we find at the end of January, February, it's probably about 80% nudists and 20% people clothed. But surely without the uh, obligation that one would have, say, in a club to strip off, aren't you going to attract voyeurs? Um, yeah, that was a problem that we that we sort of thought we might have in the early early days, but we found that um, the odd person that probably has come here for that reason um, stands out, and we we sort of find that they become uncomfortable themselves. The beachfront cottages are beautiful. The chalets are well equipped, and there are one or two strange looking caravans here too. This chalet is occupied by Judy, who's here from the North Island on her annual holiday. Judy, you're, you're obviously a keen nudist, as anyone can see by your suntan. Uh, have you been coming here very Often. No, I came here for the first time last year. I heard about it from friends and decided to come here last year and made a decision then that I'd certainly come back. And it's lovely. You don't From morning till night, you can just be totally free, which is something you can't do. And even nudist beaches, once you can't do, have that sort of a life. That's lovely. I love it here. It's well, a very special place. Did you ever belong to a nudist club? Yes, I did. I belonged to one for many years in Hawke's Bay. But it's not the same sort of feeling. It's very much a place where you have to go to for the day, maybe stay a weekend, but it's not like this. I wish there were some places like this in the North Island so I didn't have to come so far. Mm. You don't thing. mind the fact that there are closed people here? No. I think that's another lovely thing about it, is that you have that choice to be unclothed all day if you want to, and if it doesn't suit them, then that's fine too. And I'm sure many more people are converted by this sort of life than mm. people who go away to nudist clubs and shut them away out in the country somewhere. Yes. Yeah, sure they are. I brought a friend down this year and she'd never done this sort of thing. She's come down with me this year and just loves it. That's, yeah, it's nice. I like it here. And how long uh, do you stay at one time? Well, this uh, your last year, two weeks, and the same this time. We come quite a long way, so it's it's not worth staying for even less time than that. Right. It's our annual holiday. Mapua offers everything that the naturist or non-naturist could want. Gone are the arguments for the club against the beach, because here they have both. All of the usual facilities of a landed club, but also the unique bonus of its own private beach. People, people feel very relaxed in this open atmosphere and definitely have gone back and joined up with the clubs in their hometowns. Okay, now, just on a, a lighter note, Cathy, uh, I noticed that as you drive into the leisure park, uh, it doesn't actually state on the front there that it's clothing optional. Surely this is going to be quite a shock to a lot of casual visitors who just want to book in for the night to suddenly be confronted by lots of naked people. Yeah, it, it, has, it has been a shock for a few people, I must admit, driving in and, and um, finding out that it is a, a, a dress optional park. But, but basically people, once they're here, they feel quite happy, you know, being in the park. The reason we took it down was that we found it was a barrier for people coming in. Um, they just sort of saw the sign at the gate and, and that was it. They just couldn't come any further. Now that, you know, now they drive in and, and, and feel really good about being here and think what, what a great place it is. Um, there's been quite a lot of humorous things over the years. Um, we find that we really we get really good service during Christmas from all our deliveries. I think there's a big future in it. Um, you know, just from what we, um, the feedback we get from the people that, that find the place, particularly camper vans, European people, the first question they ask is where, where can they go from here? And most of them are really disappointed to find that this is the only dress optional place or nudist place open to pub the public. And I think there's, there's a lot of scope to have um, parks like this open right throughout New Zealand. We'd noticed yesterday this trimaran drift along the estuary and drop anchor just off the beach. It stayed overnight, 
And then, during our little beach party, its owner appeared. Come on! Come on! Come on, everybody! Come on! Come on! <laughs> His name is Barry, and he's never before mixed socially with nudists. He was a little shy at first, but paddled his dinghy over and, towel discreetly placed, joined us. As always, though, it took only minutes to forget his absence of clothes and relax to enjoy our naked socialising. He was so pleased to be invited over that he offered to take us out on the trimaran the following day. Occasionally, when we travel around the world, we like to do it in style. So it was quite a surprise for the members of Nelson Sun Club to see this huge, stretched Cadillac limo arrive. It was just a bit of fun, really, but being somewhat uncommon in New Zealand, it created quite a lot of interest. Even though it was midweek, Many members turned up to make us welcome and participate in our fun. They have every reason to be proud of their grounds here, especially as one of their long-established members built this unbelievable high-quality golf course. And they take it pretty seriously too. It's extremely well maintained, and I found the experience as an unaccomplished golfer for 25 years of playing golf in the nude quite unique. Playing back in England is never going to be the same from now on. Good Minotem, and we've still yet to explain this fast game, and a lovely pool, form part of a gentle, open and tranquil family nature's club. They call this the flying fox, and the kids love it. It's the first time I've seen one of these in a nudist club, so if you're watching club owners and members, think about building one. Everyone will really enjoy it. In just a few short hours, on an all too brief visit to Nelson Sun Club, we were totally entranced by the beautiful, natural ambience of this place and its people. So long as there are people with vision who enjoy living naturally without clothes, more and more new clubs like those we've seen will emerge, each with its own character and charm. It's what makes our role of bringing you these visions such a pleasure.
<laughs> We're on our way now to the southernmost point of this wonderful adventure tour, Christchurch. Our guides, Doug and Peggy, assure us that we've only seen the merest fraction of this beautiful country, which makes the prospect of returning one day something to really look forward to. The real character of Christchurch, which is the principal city in the district of Canterbury, was formed in 1851 when the settlers arrived from England. Typical of the English of that period, something akin to a class system emerged as these settlers arrived under the auspices of the Church of England and the Canterbury Association. Everything about Christchurch is very English. The cathedral with classic English architecture, the government buildings, houses, streets and even the street names. Punts lazily meander the canals. And squires, reminiscent of Hyde Park's Speaker's Corner, exist for those with passionate views to share. There's even a traditional town crier. This week is Irish Week in Christchurch, the major events of the day being a concert by the Irish band Chisel in the square, now playing this evening at the Rickon and Race Course. There shall be feature races, skydiving, and a display of draft horses. Here we go. There's a modern, vibrant side to Christchurch too, and it attracts tourists from all over the world. Year round, there's always something happening, and large sums of money have been spent on hotels like this to cater for the growing tourist market. And I have no doubt there's truth in what they say. But sure a body. And of course, naturism too. Close to Christchurch, and sadly our last port of call, Canterbury Sun Club, with its substantial membership and excellent grounds, reflects the success of this city. And again, the press want to interview us. Extensive grounds with charming chalets, space for camping and caravans. Here we have yet another example of expanding naturism. It's a fact that in New Zealand, wherever you live, you'll not be too far from a nudist beach or club. Canterbury is a well-equipped, regular and spacious club with a lively family membership. The sports facilities are particularly good with two well-made Minuten courts. So, at last, for those of you, particularly in America and many of the European countries, a little bit about the game, Minuten. This peculiar looking thing, Kay, is called uh, it's a Minuten bat. And actually, in fact, its real name is a thug. And perhaps I should explain that the game originated from the Kent Sun Club in England, and I think they have some hold some sort of uh, rights as to how the game is played. The uh, rules were formulated there and spread throughout the, the nudist world, particularly New Zealand and Australia, and probably other countries as well, I don't know. 
Uh, but there are very strict rules as to the construction of that, and that is that it's 10 inches diameter, and the handle must be inside that uh, circumference. Go, Scotty, go, go get it, Scotty. Children are very well catered for as well. Adventure, exploring and games, all safe within the security of the club grounds and delightfully free from conventional embarrassment and unconcerned by gender differences. Sooner or later, these children are going to face a lot of peer pressure through schools and friends. Already here, there are some signs with the older ones, teenagers, that this pressure from the uninformed or misinformed is creating difficulties. One day, perhaps one day, the world will begin to accept that being naked is not shameful or threatening, not sexual or offensive, but simply natural. One day. That's New Zealand, or at least a small part of it. We hope that you've enjoyed this first ever look at how Kiwi naturists blend their activities with the beauty of this land. The public attitude is very open, although the nudists here seem not to have realised the importance of this yet. Perhaps our film will make them recognise how lucky they really are. Now, as you contemplate rewinding this tape, we head back on our long drive to Auckland planning as we go, where next to film, to bring you more images of the wonderful world of naturism.